George, the uh, Federal Reserve System recently reported that uh, since the year 2000, uh, household wealth in the United States has increased by $37 trillion. They also reported that, th that uh, the, uh, all, all of that wealth w went mm -hmm. to the top 3% of income earners. Right. The next 7% kind of held steady, and the bottom 90% steadily declined. Right. Now, clearly, this isn't a fair distribution. Nope. But in a free market society, uh, you know, who's, who's to blame? What, what does one do about, about this situation? Yeah, that's a great, great question, Dan. I think uh, it's, it's a very simple question to a very complex problem, right? Um, fundamentally, you know, who's responsible? Uh, there's really no one person responsible. And is it fair? Um, when you ask that question of fairness, um, you assume that someone's in charge and have made a decision about this or that, uh, when, they're, when, in, when in fact that's not the case either. There, there's no one person responsible and there's no one person or entity that uh, uh, has made a decision uh, with respect to this income inequality issue. Um, I think if we were going to point our finger at, at a, you know, a big target, uh, we would have to say democratic capitalism uh, may be at fault. Uh, in that, uh, within that system, um, you and I have the opportunity to satisfy our own self-interest as we pursue uh, the satisfaction of our needs and wants. And given our capabilities, fundamentally as a function of our education and our learning and experience, we can take advantage of that system, uh, uh, again, given those capabilities. There are some issues that create what we might describe as a uh, uh, lack of a level playing field, where society members don't have access to the education that they need to pursue their dreams. Uh, they don't have the economic capability because they are on the lower end of that uh, economic spectrum. And education, as we all know, continues to get higher, meaning cost more to get in a decent school to get the education that you need. I think uh, another uh, contributing factor with respect to income inequality is that um, there's been a significant change in the tax structure uh, within the United States. Uh, back in a prior administration, uh, I'll just say it was the Bush administration. Uh, recent uh, tax changes that were done at that time transferred two trillion dollars to the upper members of our society with respect to income and wealth. Uh, where did that money go for the other folks that are con continuing to decline? They didn't see those advantages because they didn't have the investments and the other instru instruments that would allow them to do that. Um, I think another contributing factor uh, with respect to income inequality is that um, those who are in a position to leverage their closeness to the process of market capitalism are able to do so in a way that advantages them and their descendants that those on the other end of the economic spectrum don't have. For example, a hedge fund, hedge fund manager on Wall Street can make on average a billion dollars a year. Uh, five years ago, three years ago, uh, a key hedge fund manager who I won't name made $10 billion a year. Those who are closest to the practice of democratic capitalism and can influence that process are in a position to gain the most from it. Those on the opposite end of the spectrum are not. Yes, uh, focusing on solutions, if there are any, George, uh, you can either raise the bottom or lower the top. Uh, in terms of raising the bottom, We've had quite a rush to uh, expand the minimum wage uh, in various cities and the federal government. Given that the studies seem to be mixed on the overall result, even the Congressional Budget Office, finding that it might price certain marginal workers out of the employment market uh, at all, uh, how can we really go after raising the bottom and on terms of lowering the top? Uh, is there any fair way to try and correct the excesses, uh, whether it be hedge fund managers or others? Uh, what are the practical solutions, if any? Well, uh, that's, that's a great question, John. I think uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough call. Um, the Harvard University did a study uh, and asked the average American consumer uh, what the difference is on average between their compensation and their CEOs, for example. 
and, and they guessed 30 times, and, and that's mm -hmm. not correct. Uh, it's actually 354 times. And they thought, they asked the question, what, what's a fair ratio? Uh, they said seven to one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the respondents to the survey said seven to one. Um, if indeed um, it was a seven to one ratio, the average worker in the United States today would have to make $1.8 million in order to have that ratio be real. Um, so fundamentally, I don't think raising the minimum wage is going to have an effect on closing that gap and getting that ratio to seven to one, because uh, no one's going to pay an entry level employee $1.8 million a year. Uh, nor do I think uh, taxing those who are at the top of the wealth spectrum um, is going to be the answer either. I think, uh, as I mentioned in my earlier comments, that the ma a major contributing factor to individuals' capabilities to improve themselves and the, and simply in the context of wealth is allowing them to have access to higher education because the technology and the means and methods through which we conduct business in this country today have, less, have left a vast number of our citizens uh, out of the game. And unless they can somehow figure uh, out how to acquire those technical and education skills, uh, raising, the, raising the minimum wage will always still be the minimum wage. Thank you. You know, George, if um, motivation theory is applied here, you'd say that people want to aspire to be in that top percent. Mm -hmm. And if there's no motivation for me to work hard to get into that top percent, and I just expect somebody to, to hand me something that I didn't work for, that, that nobody is going to prosper. Um, do you think that's really the issue? Actually, I, I don't. Um, I think that uh, th this, is, this is huge. A cultural uh, norm uh, that exists in the world of the uh, underprivileged is that, and this is not as they would phrase it, uh, the system is as it is and I can't change it, mm -hmm. therefore, why try? Um, the truth of the matter is, it's a different world than their environment allows them to see. Mm -hmm. And I think um, everyone who has a capability to do anything, if given the right opportunity and the right motivation uh, mm -hmm. from family members, uh, from support groups, from non-governmental agencies, uh, from friends and neighbors, that encourages them to take advantage of what's there, mm -hmm. assuming it's there, to better themselves, that they indeed will. I don't think it's a lack of motivation. I don't think it's uh, a, a situation where you say, you know, certain members of our society are just lazy, mm -hmm. and therefore, no matter what you do for them, it won't matter because they don't have the, the, the chutzpah uh, to go get it and make it happen. Uh, I, I believe that's not true. You know, this is an issue that I think if, we'll, if we take the time, we'll have more opportunity to talk about, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope we can do that. 